Hello everyone, this is Tanya Barbie of I Am Still a Rose. How are you tonight? How was your fourth? Did you do anything special? Um, in the DMV area, it was raining pretty badly, but I'm sure everybody did something. Um, some people still cooked out. Some people still did, did what they had to do. So um, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Fourth of July is a time where we all come together with our families and just have some fun. Well, I had a funeral to attend, my auntie. I did a live on Sunday to talk about her and forgiveness and community and love and um, just mending issues, getting them out of the way so that you can live your life to the fullest because a lot of us hold on to so much. And um, sometimes it's good to just get that stuff out. They may be mad at you, but at least you got it off your chest. And asking people to forgive you even though you didn't do anything Sometimes that's refreshing too because it it relieves you of that drama, of that mess. Well, anyway, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. I was reading this article um, from a, a, a person that is on Twitter, and she calls herself Catfish, and she goes by Jasmine J. And I put the credits on Facebook because this is not my work, this is her work. But I wanted to share it with you because some of us may have experienced this or some of us may need to warn our girlfriends about the hobo sexual. So I'm gonna read it to you as quickly as I can and then I'm gonna give you my insight. Um, the term hobosexual was first introduced to this young lady into her vocabulary when a dear colleague was playfully speaking of men who prey on single women who live alone so they can have a place to stay rent free. Um, in quotation marks, the person says, I wasn't letting him stay over for more than one night. You know how those hobosexuals are, she said in passing. So this young lady who wrote this article says, my brain gobbled up the phrase and light bulbs went off. Hobo, crudely meaning homeless and sexual. Hmm, brilliant. I think catfish might be onto something. That's my words. Finally, there was language to be used to describe the predatory practice that some men employ to live off other women. But it appears this term was coined by a Twitter user in reference to Insecure's notorious Lawrence's character who began sleeping around post ISA breakup after he moved out. So apparently this, was, this, this term was used in Insecure. Um, which is the show that comes on. Uh, I can't quote the quote that was used in Insecure because it's words that I wouldn't use uh, live. While the idea of the hobosexual may be comical in idea, in practice it can be very insidious. A lot of women get so swept up in the initial waves of love that they bypass all the red flags. Why do we always bypass the red flags. Why do we ignore the red flags? I'm asking all of us to including myself because I've been there, trust me. I'm no expert, but by the experience of my peers and a few articles I've read, I've identified some key signs, ladies, roses. You should look out for to see if your new boo is in love or is he just looking for a place to live for free? He love bombs you. I've heard this phrase from a psychology study, but basically love bombing 
is when someone comes on super strong, promising you the world, their heart, and their time. While they may seem romantic, healthy relationships evolve over time. Men know that they can love bomb you and get you so caught up in the feelings of adoration that you miss all the dirty tricks. Don't be too impressed with someone who says they want to marry you or have kids early on. They may even go as far as to boldly say, we should move in together. I just want to be around you all the time. No, he doesn't, sis. He wants a place to sleep. He wants a place to sleep. He lives with his parents. He doesn't own his own place. This one is pretty straightforward, but yes, hobosexuals have to be well homeless. If he starts leaving clothes, toothbrushes, towels, and other belongings in your apartment or home without having a conversation with you, clearly he's just trying to get cozy. He may even tell you a sob story about living his situation with his ex. Oh my, I've heard those. Explaining why his place of living just isn't comfortable. Guess what? In early dating, this is not your problem. He should be asking other friends and family members for a spot to stay in that case, not the new girl he just started sleeping with. He's unemployed. Now this isn't a sure sign, but it's a telling. Men like to tell you they fell on hard times, but seriously, who hasn't? And work doesn't mean it has to be some high profile gig, but there should be something daily he is doing to reach his goals or to help pay the bills during unemployment time. If he has more excuses than tangible actions, oh, I like this. He may be looking to pull one over on you. Plus, Moving someone unemployed in your space of living only means more bills and another mouth to feed. Are you a lover or his mama? You always have to ask him to leave. Ever dealt with a guy who never seemed to have anywhere to go? Red flag. You may be leaving for work and he's just sitting on the couch, twiddling his thumbs. Don't ignore that. If you always have to say, hey, I'm headed out, you should go too. Every time he stays the night, most likely he has no goals. He has nowhere to go. So in all this, oh, and he might woo you to stay over to cook for you. I've, I've heard that one. And run a few errands for you. It may be romantic at first, but unless he's signing up to be a new full-time house hubby, he's most likely taking advantage of you. What do you think about this? Hmm. How many of you are in love with someone who has sexed you up real good and you've moved him in. You've never been to his place, but overnight he's moved all of his things into your place. He gave you a sob story about how he had to leave his place because of, of a bad situation, a bad ex, a bad mama who told him he had to get out, a sibling who said she was tired of him. Whatever the sob story he gave you or ex-girlfriend told him to get out, Whatever the sob story he gave you, think twice about it because it might be that he really truly needs a home to stay. And if he's habitually been doing that, that's what he's habitually going to do. I've been there, I've heard the story, I've married that person and it was hell. Um, we have to know what we're getting ourselves into. And anytime you hear that, that feel that, that voice, that inner voice saying, I don't know, you need to check twice. You need to really think about this. 
really think about it because it's a possibility you're getting yourself into something you will not easily be able to get yourself out of. And being with someone who is not sincere and you've moved him in your home, do you realize how hard it would be to get him out of your home the moment he moves his things inside your home? There are legal implications where you just can't say, get out. You have to go through the law to get him out. So they're called ex partes. I'm not a lawyer, but I've been there. So think about that. Think about that when somebody is telling you early on in the relationship, I love you, I want to move in, uh, I can't stand to be without you, you've never gone to their house, mind you, I want to I wanna get to know you better, I can't leave, every time I see you, I want to be with you longer, and when you're going out to work, they're lingering in the house, they don't have to go to work today, they don't have to go to work tomorrow, they don't have to go to work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, something is wrong with that picture picture. And we have to also ask ourselves, why would we be involved with someone? Why would we be involved with someone that we haven't even seen their home? Well, we haven't even gone to visit their home. We have a tendency to always shower people in our lives with love but we never give them an opportunity to do the same thing. And we have to ask ourselves, why do we do that? Why do we get so caught up in loving people that we forget about loving ourselves? So if, and why would you bring him to your home first? Why wouldn't he invite you to his home first? Okay, go out to dinner, have some fun go out into public places. But when it comes time to your private home where you live, your dwelling, why wouldn't you go to his home first? Why wouldn't you want to know what you're working with first? And we have a tendency to forget all about that. But yet on the inside, we know we should be, hey, let's go over your house this time. We've been over my house already. Let It's your turn. How about that? Let's go see what's going on. Let's go over your house. I'll bring up, I'll bring a dish. Um, let's not watch a movie at your house. And when he starts giving you excuses, well, um, I'm all packed up. It's full of boxes. I wrote about it full of boxes in there. Um, um, I can't, um, I'm getting ready to move out. So I wouldn't want you to see this place because you will think this is how I live. So maybe next week, next week comes around, nothing happens. Well, um, um, I was going to bring you over, but I can't right now because, um, um, we've already started moving and, and, and my new place won't be ready till another month from now. So now all my things are in storage. Okay. Now I felt all these vibes. I knew something wasn't right, but that kind natured side of me said, but he's a nice person. Why would he be lying? Why would he not be telling me the truth? I didn't do anything for him to lie to me. He's not my wife, my husband. So why? what, what would make him want to lie to me? Because that's what people do. They exploit nice people. And we have to be on our... P's and Q's at all the time, all times. And we have to ask questions and we have to demand answers. And if we don't get those answers, we need to move on because that means that person is not the one for us. But for someone to be in your home and they don't want to leave 
and they're looking around checking to see how much space you got in the closet making and leaving things every time they come over and you didn't sign up for that they're trying to move in your home and why are we so lonely that we're sitting there allowing it to happen and that's why it's so important for us to love on ourselves and don't beat up on ourselves okay so we made a mistake okay so our marriage failed okay so our long a breakup from a from a boyfriend it it didn't last okay it is what it is i say when relationships don't work out hold up the mirror evaluate what you did what you did in the relationship that what you did was good what was good what you did that wasn't so good and fix it fix it because we all played a part in it we all played a part in our failed relationships let's just fess up to it you know what my part was first it was the wrong person every time they told me a lie i helped them fix the lie i became an enabler so can i blame him for me taking part in what he was doing to me mm -mm. i had to take full responsibility for that that's why i wrote owning my role in my own pain the little girl inside i said owning my role in my own pain which meant i took responsibility for it we can't sit here and go he did this to me he did that you let him in your house you showed him where the closet was you observed him bringing more clothing over your house and not taking any out you've observed him sleeping on your couch you've observed him eating your food you've observed him being there a little bit longer than you expected him to be but the one reason why you like him there the most is because he loved you physically do you really need that kind of love that you can tolerate somebody that's really only in your home to take advantage of you think about that where are some precious beautiful roses and i get some hate email all the time i get some love email i even get a few pictures of of, of body parts mind you can you believe that yes i do but i'm going to tell it to you straight if we want a change in our lives we got to be that change and you can't be on your girl on the phone with your girlfriends girl i i can't believe it he's been in my house all these days and he ain't brought no food in here he keep bringing all these clothes in here it's your fault you've opened the door you've allowed him to come in you've allowed him to take advantage of you and i'm not knocking you because i've been there what i do suggest is you rectify it you do what you can to get him out close up that door and not be so gullible and not be so needy for affection save it for somebody who truly loves you and that's going to take time but while that's taking time while you're waiting for that take care of yourself care for you love on you don't compromise your principles for no one nobody because the moment you start compromising your principles everybody else will start compromising your principles because you won't have any more and everybody will be observing you and don't have children in your home while this is going on because then they'll really take advantage of you because they can recognize 
everybody else taking advantage of you. They don't say, well, I'm going to be good to mommy because I see how everybody's taking advantage of her. They get on the bandwagon and do the same thing. So it's up to us to say no more. I heard on the radio driving home in the rainstorm today, a woman had the audacity to ask, um, I, I, 96.3, I think that's Steve Harvey's station, um, but it wasn't him, it was one of the ladies, because I, 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 I tend, I've gotten so hooked on Joel Osteen, I hardly ever listen to the radio or I listen to my own music on iTunes. Um, but um, I heard the, the question was, I'm, I, am, I am married and my lover is married. And we've been messing around for, I think she said five years. And I am getting ready to divorce my husband to be with my lover. And he's supposed to divorce his wife to be with me, but he hasn't done it yet. Um, should I wait for him or leave him alone? And call us just calling in. That didn't even warrant an answer. Why would anybody call in? Hey, sis, why would anybody call in to answer, to respond to that? She's messing with a married man. Oh, mind you, he's a he's a a a, a big wheel in the community, and she works for him. So I guess those late nights board meetings or whatever you call them, the kind, the late night meetings, he's probably been with her instead of home and being at home with his wife and family. And she wants to know, should she leave him alone? Of course, all the callers called in and said she should leave him alone. And some said, karma, don't mess with karma because he's going to do you the same way he did her. What about what she's doing to her husband? She was married too. They both were married people. So she's just as guilty as he is. And being that she's such a guilty party, why would we even give her advice? She knows she's wrong. That's why she called the radio station in the first place. She shouldn't have been messing with her boss and she shouldn't have been messing with a married man and she being married herself. It's a no brainer. And it's going to be a whole lot of karma and a whole lot of mess. Uh, about three months ago, I did a live about a woman who killed a pastor because she said he broke her heart. She killed him in front of his wife. Did you hear me? She killed the pastor in front of his wife while she was saying, you broke my heart. And she shot the wife. So don't be playing with people's spouses. Don't do that. And you wonder about the karma. You're going to get the karma. Don't mess with nobody's husband. And we wonder why we're so unhappy. We're so confused. We're so miserable with our lives. We just got to take responsibility for ourselves. We have to we have to say, I'm done. I'm done with the foolishness. I'm done with the drama. I'm done with the pain in my life. I want something new. I want to be a new person. And I want to start today. And start today. And when somebody says something foolish to you, question it challenge them oh you get ready to you you your stuff is all packed up in your home and you're getting ready to move out okay um you need some help oh no i don't need any help um well let me come over and help you anyway no 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 i'm good i insist if we're going to be in this relationship I want to know where you live. And if that's too hard for you, then I'm sorry. I'm not the one for you. Hmm. That's how you got to do it. That's exactly how you got to do it. 
we have to stop hearing that inner voice saying, don't do it. I don't know if I was you, don't do it. And you do it anyway. That's on you. And then you're on the phone with your girlfriends. I can't believe he did me like this. Yeah, he did you like that. And you are the reason why he did you like that. And if you want to change, you got to be that change. We know going in, sometimes I do believe when we're getting married to somebody, we know going in it's going to be a bad marriage. Hmm. Why do we do that? You hear that inner voice saying, don't do it. Don't go down that aisle. Run, run. And you going down looking all pretty in your white dress and you everything. Some women now, they dancing down the aisle. They doing all of that. Really? You know it's not going to work. And we always think we can change somebody. You know what a therapist told me once? She told me, Dr. Berry, the, one of the best, a renowned therapist, she's also known on uh, to be giving her insight in Essence Magazine, uh, Dr. Joyce Berry. She's, she's a, doc, a, a, a therapist in Columbia, Maryland. Um, had to give her a shout out because this is something I'll never forget. She says, you know, you love people and that's a good thing. She said, and you love the men that you marry. You love love. She said, but you have a tendency to love someone for their potential, not for who they are. And she said, I had to always take in consideration they may never live up to their potential. Did you hear that? We have a tendency of hooking up with people because we see what they could be. We see how awesome they could be. We see that with us behind them, ain't nothing they can't do. Because I'm a powerhouse and if I throw all my stuff on him, he gonna be a powerhouse. Because what they say behind a successful man is a successful woman, not necessarily. You can push, you can, you can be the best cheerleader, you can be everything this person dreamt of having, but if they don't have it within themselves to be the best that they can be, to grow beyond measures, to take care of family, to be the best on their jobs and their profession. Um, if they don't have it in them to do that for whatever reasons, it's nothing you can do to instill that in them. Nothing. They got to want it. They got to have it in their heart to do it. So be careful about marrying that person because you see potential in them. You got to be able to deal with them as they are today, just in case they may not ever make it to their full potential. You got to be able to accept them as they are. You got to be able to accept them in the current place that they are at because that might be it. And not being pessimistic, you just gotta understand, and I'll give you a complete, honest example, a true example, rather. I wrote about it in the book, The Little Girl Inside, whole book about this gentleman. He was at a closing, a million dollar closing, more like 10 million for a business that he was getting ready to launch. And it didn't happen. 
they obviously did a background check and said, this man ain't right. We ain't giving up $10,000 to this man. He ain't ready. That close to changing his life, my life, family's life, just like that. He wasn't ready. His mind was, but his heart wasn't in it. Because if his heart was in it, everything would have been in sync. Mind and heart's got to be in sync for things to go in a positive direction. If one is working and one is not, it, you're going to be, you're going to be in, there's going to be a lot of friction, a lot of a turmoil, because these two things are fighting. These vital organs are fighting this way, not together, not in sync, not on one accord. So he lost that opportunity. It didn't happen. So that million dollar opportunity is gone. And the way I see it, eight years later, no, six years later, it's still gone. It's not going to happen. But see, when I married him, I said, oh my God, Ooh, he's so smart. He's an engineer too. Ooh, with me behind him, I'm going to help him do this. I'm going to help him do that. We're going to get this business off the ground. We're going to, his heart wasn't right. And his heart, because of his heart not being right, nothing came to fruition. Everything he touched failed because his heart wasn't right. So be careful about being with people admiring them for what they could be. You got to love them and embrace them for where they are now. And always remember, it may not ever come to fruition that they be all that they can be. And you be stuck with somebody, stuck with somebody, as my coworker says, stuck with somebody that doesn't go all the way. And that's okay if you're okay with mediocrity. If you're okay, if it doesn't matter to you. But I've always wanted to go as far as I could go, work as hard as I could work to get what I wanted in life. And it would be awesome to have a mate that does the same thing. So back to the original topic, be careful about who you let inside your doors. Be careful about who you break bread with because they could have an ulterior motive and it's not about love. It's about home, a nice home, a nice place to lay their head. Not even home because home is where the heart is. It's about shelter. It's a survival mode. I'll do what I can, lady, to lay my head down to make sure I have a shelter. So be careful about that. Be careful about what you do, where you are, how you do it. Always be thinking and be vigilant because there are a lot of predators out here just looking for game serial predators. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I give, I give um, credit to Catfish. She's um, at J, her name is Catfish at J-A-S-L-E-E-N-E-J. -E 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 this was an awesome article about hobosexual. So for those of you who are out there dating, be careful about who you bring home and just be vigilant. Make sure this person is sincere before you bring them home. Go out as much as you can. I don't care if you gotta do, um, he pay a few dates and you, you pay a few dates. I can't stand Dutch, that makes no sense. You might as well just go out with your girlfriend. Um, I don't even do that with girlfriends. One pay or the other pay the next time. I just don't like Dutch. 
But anyway, sometimes you pay, sometimes he pays, but don't be so quick to bring somebody to your home. And, and many of you have beautiful homes. Many of you have worked hard to make your home that gorgeous place, that dwelling that you can't wait to get to after work. Why would you disrupt your peace with somebody you just met who may be exploiting you or may have intentions of exploiting you? So that's why it's important to date for a lengthy period before you start getting all cozied up. And if you're lonely and you're broken, be really careful about dating because they see you coming and they will exploit you. They will exploit you and you won't even know what hit you. That's why it's important to love ourselves. It's important to get to know where we messed up, get to know how we got to where we are. And don't, don't knock yourself too long. It's okay to say, dang, I did this wrong. I did that wrong. It's okay to list it. But then think about ways that you did a good thing too. And then put it all down on paper and start recognizing when you're about to do the bad things again and don't do them. That's how you change. That's how you change. You say, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to be so nice and, and bring people into my dwelling um, after the second date. That's something you got to change. I'm not going to put all my business out there um, to him on the first date. Because then he knows all about you. He knows how to position himself to go in for the kill just by you telling him your story. He doesn't, he, his, he, he's not privy to know your story on the first day. He, it's not his business. He doesn't deserve to know what you went through on the first day. It's not his business. Because if he mean, if he does not mean you well, he's going to use that to his advantage. So I just wanted to put that out there. Be very careful about these hobosexuals. They have no intention except to sex you up and move in your place because they don't have a place. And some men are so accustomed to doing this that they're extremely skilled and they go from house to house. And they don't even be upset when you kick them to the curb because they've already got another house to go to because they, they, they know they know, how, they know their limits. So if you've been cussing them out, fussing at them for the last six, seven months, it's okay with them because they already got a girlfriend coming, uh, they've, they've already planned, that's coming down the street. They already called them, I'm coming. My old lady got mad at me. I can't deal with this no more. Can I come stay with you? And it's a vicious cycle. And you know why it's a vicious cycle? Because we have allowed it to happen. We have allowed it to happen. Vicious cycles stop when we stop them. Vicious cycles stop when we stop them. I did a live a few weeks ago about these young girls hooking up with these boys, these young boys who, who are impregnating all these women. They may have four children in their 20, 25, with five kids. If one of those women says, uh-uh, you better put something on that. I'm not having a child by you. You already have two. Or you already have one. I'm not going to be your baby's mama like that. Vicious cycles. Somebody's got to stop them. That's why they're vicious. Nobody's stopping them. 
But I guarantee you, if women started standing up to these young men and said, no, I'm not doing that. Not with you. No, I'll be the third baby's mama. Put something on it. I'm not going to let you do that to me too. But guess what they're thinking? Oh, when I have my baby with him, it's going to be different. He's paying $25 child support for each one of those kids because he don't have a real job. And you're going to get something different? How? What? Vicious cycles. Ladies, roses, beautiful roses. We have to stop. It's our fault. It's not their fault. They can't just, they're not going to barge in your home. You allow them in. First, you want to impress them. Oh, look at my house. Oh, look at my three-car garage. Oh, yeah, I got two cars and two of them. And one is for my special man, whoever that's going to be. So he's checking all this out. He might not even have a car. But he is calculating. Oh, wow. Look at this. She got five bedrooms in here. Wow. Okay. I'm going in for the kill on this one. Within a week, he's in the house. And he knows a lonely woman when he sees a lonely woman. He knows a lonely woman when he sees a lonely woman and he exploits her. Now, men, I, I, I love you too. I'm going to be on your side. There are days when I'm going to be on your side because I've heard stories about the women taking advantage of you as well. So I got you. But tonight I'm talking to the ladies, my roses, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful roses. Break those vicious cycles. Stand up. If Stand up to them. If, if, if you're upset and scared because you might not see them again, in the long run, that's for you. That's for you. Y'all hear about the young man who had the braids at Six Flags in Texas and they fired him because they didn't like his hair? Now he's a model. When God closes a door, another one opens up for you. It's going to be a better door. But you got to prepare yourself for that better door. You can't do the same thing you did with all the other bad things that you did. You got to be different. You got to make some changes. I've been forgiving people and asking for forgiveness all month. This is my birthday month. Monday, Monday is my birthday. And I wanted to do something different. I wanted to cleanse my soul of all that, all that bitterness. And I felt I did, but I read something that says, does something, is something still in your head about somebody hurting you? And it was, and I addressed it. I called those people. One was an uncle. I talked about that last Sunday on um, leaving my aunt's funeral. Um, that was an uncle that I was mad at him for since 1999. I don't even know how many years that is. That's too long. Because I felt he wasn't there for my dad when he was dying. Okay, get over it. Why we hold on to so many grudges? For what? Cleanse all of this. Get, get it out. Because our heart and our mind, all of that should be working in sync so we can be happy people, so we can love one another, so we can grow, so we can find love. Because when you love yourself, y'all, love will find you so quickly. You can go, mm, should it be this one or that one? Just from loving yourself. But if you do not love yourself, you're going to get all this mess in your home day in, day out. Why? Why? It doesn't make sense. Hey, Daryl, I didn't know we had the same birthday all these years. 
That is wonderful. Um, Daryl says, great show. One of my people treat women the way you described. Yes. Yes. Thank you. We have to love ourselves in order to get love. Let that's love. Let's love ourselves first. And if people, if you are, are, if I describe you tonight, don't feel shameful because I've been there. I wrote about my pain. I wrote about the experiences. I wrote, I wrote it to help you because it helped me while I was writing it. My paper stayed wet. As I'm reading my manuscripts, I was crying because I said, I'm too smart for this. How did I not know that I was going through this? How did I not know? But I didn't. Well, I did, but I did because I was in denial. How many of us have been in denial? How many of us want to get out of denial? You just got to take the first step. And who cares if somebody, girl, she's been married. Ooh, she even got married again. Girl, she divorced already. Who cares what they think? They're not paying all your bills. They're not making sure your children get from point A to point B. Why do you care about what they think? And if you on their mind in the first place, you got something that they want in the first place. So you got something going on even when you think you don't have something going on. And it's all right. You are that beautiful rose. You do deserve the best. You've gone through crap, and it's time to change that. Don't let nobody come in your house who don't deserve to be in your house. And when you they deserve to be in your house, you'll know because they're doing so much for you. You you can't you don't know whether you're coming or going. You feel like you're a stranger in your own home because they're doing so much to make you more comfortable at home. That's a person that loves you and adores you and you should keep in your life. That's the person. Um, Be the Rose is coming up really soon, September the 21st. If you are a rose and you know you got some thorns that you need to work out, you need to be at Be The Rose event for women where I celebrate. Tanya Barbie has the best parties. This is a celebration for you. This is not my birthday party. This year, I'm not having one. I'm sacrificing my own special day because I want to use my financial resources on you to make your day special on September 21st. It is be the rose, not the thorn. The thorns consist of brokenness, loneliness, sexual abuse, betrayal, insecurity, jealousy, domestic violence, shame, unforgiveness, depression, alcohol abuse, abandonment, divorce. The list goes on and on and on. We're going to cut it. We're going to cut it, cut it, cut it, and we're going to celebrate you as the rose that you are to be. I Am Still a Rose was created to help empower and inspire you to be the best that you can be because it has worked for me. And I tell you, I'm in love with Tanya Barbie. I'm in love with her in spite of all this stuff brokenness, loneliness, insecurity, all of that. I'm still a rose and so are you. A um, few more things. Um, YouTube, if you want to find any of my past videos, please uh, view them, like them, subscribe to the channel if you're interested. Um, books, my, my two books, the Little Girl Inside and I Am Still a Rose are anywhere books are sold. 
And if you're Amazon Prime, is the, the 15th is my birthday. That'll be a nice day to get it. Um, they're right there. Uh, teas, boys, girls, roses, the black rose for the men. Y'all, I have some beautiful products that are out there on tanyabarbie.com. I am so happy and I'm honored to be working with John Clement, my graphics artist, my partner in crime. Um, he's done my website. He's redone a lot of things for me. Um, he's just been tremendously supportive and, and helping me with my vision. And I'm so blessed to know him. Um, everything is happening now. And I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for you all. I'm so grateful for the following. Um, I'm still a Rose Page. If you haven't uh, liked me there on Facebook page, please do so and share it with those. Y'all know good and well. Y'all know somebody who's knowing right now who's got some hobosexual in their home. Share this video with them because we got to break that cycle. It's our fault. These, these, these men didn't break in our homes and jump in our beds and put their clothes in our closet and put their toothbrush in our bathroom without us allowing it. We had to feed them. They ain't got no money for no food. So that's an extra food, that's extra plate we got to make with our money. It's our fault. We can change that. Play the, it's okay to play the name, the blame game once and then make some changes, make some adjustments. It's okay. We make, we make mistakes. We fall down, but we got to get up. We got to get up and we have to break those vicious cycles. It is up to us. If we don't, break those vicious cycles. It's going to become worse. It's going to become worse. Please, let's make a difference. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate you all tonight. I will see you again next week. Oh, that's right. And Friday, WBGR, um, Still Arose. WBGR online, Facebook. You can see all my videos there as well. My recordings at uh, WBGR. Uh, tune into them. They're doing a lot of great things, uh, awesome topics about everything imaginable. Um, tune into them. And Barbie's Real Talk, my podcast as well. So as I said, a lot going on. We got products for everybody. So look, check it out. Let me know what you think and watch my promo. Oh my gosh, for all the exciting speakers I have coming um, being at the Be, Be The Rose who are participating. It's going to be dynamic. I'm still adding people. It is going to be dynamic. Thank you. I'll see you next time. I am still a rose and so are you. You take care. See you next time. Bye now. Get some rest. Don't forget, break those cycles. It's up to us to make a difference. Good night.